think we can start. No? So, welcome to the third session of POTS on information extraction and efficient enumeration of answers. It's, but they told me that it works. Huh? <laughs> it works, yeah. So, I think we can start. So, welcome to the third uh, session of POTS on information extraction and efficient enumeration of answers. So, the first talk is about document spanners and Francisco will give the talk. Okay, um, so I'm going to talk about document spanners for extracting incomplete information. So a task that we often want to do is to take uh, information from a lot of multiple heterogeneous sources and combine that, combine that information and get some useful insights from it. But the problem is that this information is usually in different formats and following different conventions. But the common thing about a lot of formats is that they're usually in plain text and they have a very simple structure. So think about CSV, JSON, system logs. Um, and another problem that we often have when dealing with this information is that it's often incomplete and it has uh, some errors in the format. So what we really need here is a robust language that will allow us to extract and relate the information in these semi-structured data sources. Um, so for this reason, rule-based information extraction has gained a lot of attention from the database community lately. And there are a lot of proposals trying to address this area, but it's not really clear how they compare in terms of expressiveness or like what advantages you can get from using one or another. So for this paper, we focused on two different proposals, uh, variable regex and variable automata, and extraction rules. And we developed a framework around them to be able to compare their expressiveness and complexity. And we hope that this framework is general enough to also adapt to other approaches to information extraction. So basically our contribution here uh, in regards to regex formulas and extraction rules is that we provide new declarative semantics that allow us to capture incomplete information. Uh, we compared these two proposals in terms of expressiveness and complexity and also we uh, study the specific problem of evaluating these kind of expressions and also some static analysis problems related to them. So during the talk, I'm going to talk about these three things in the triangle. And I'll first like, give examples about each of them uh, in case you haven't heard of them before. So like the basic setting here is that we have a document, say a CSV file like the one up there, and we're going to treat it as an indexed string. Uh, and we are interested in spans, and spans are basically pairs of indices in this string, like the one here. So a mapping is going to be a partial function from variables to the spans. So in this case, we are assigning the name variable to the span 1.5, and the age variable to the span 6, 8. And we wa what we want to extract from this document is an annotation, which is simply a set of mappings. Uh, you can also think about this as a generalization of a relation in a database, um, in which like, this will be columns, for example, right? But the, uh, here, the generalization comes from the fact that they may be partial. Um, so, okay, let's go into regex formulas. So a regex formula or a variable regex is simply a, a regular expression with variables. So we have the usual stuff, but we add variables that might have other uh, variable regex inside that they're going to capture. So let's look at an example to um, see how this works. So here we have a document and we have an expression that is capturing the date in the variable x, and then we are capturing an error ID in the variable y, and then 
if it's present in the document, we are capturing a user ID in the variable Z. So if we evaluate this, what we are going to get is first like this mapping here uh, in the first line where we capture in the date here and the error ID here. And you can see that there's no user ID. So this is uh, unassigned. And then we are going to capture this other mapping here uh, where we have the three uh, things that we are looking for. So the semantics for variable regex, uh, these are the new semantics that we proposed. And I'm not really going to explain them in detail, but the important thing, like the main takeaway here, is that they're declarative and they're pretty concise. They fit on a single slide. So you, you have like all your, the semantics that you need in a single slide, which is uh, great. Um, so now I'm going to talk about variable Thomas. So this is like the automata counterpart of variable regex and it's simply an NFA where we have vari uh, variable transitions. So here we are opening a variable and here, uh, for example, we are clo closing that variable. So in this example, if we take the top path here in this document, we are going to capture this mapping where X uh, takes AA and then BB and then Y is basically taking BB and CC. And if we take the bottom path here, uh, we have C that captures everything, and then X will capture just BB, right? And we cannot combine like the bottom, the, like the bottom path and the top path because we can't, we cannot close, for example, a variable we that we have not opened before. Um, and in like. Uh, in our new semantics, like the thing di different from the original semantics is that we don't restrict paths uh, to contain like the same set of variables each time. So that allows us to uh, capture incomplete information. And the great thing about this new semantics is that it keeps like all the, all the great things that we knew about uh, regex and automata, variable automata from before continue to be true. So we didn't really lose anything. Uh, and we made our abstractions more general. And in particular, for example, this theorem that was known from before continues to hold that regex is a strict subset of uh, variable set of terms. Finally, we're going to uh, explain extraction rules. So an extraction rule will use a span regex, which is a variable regex where you only allow the uh, use of sigma star inside. So we'll just shorten this with just the variable x. Um, and then we are going to bundle this into formulas where the first expression is going to match the whole document. And then some variables will be associated with expressions um, of, with some like span regex that will match the contents of that variable. So let me explain this with an example. Uh, here we have an expression that matches the whole document and then assigns X to a line in this document. And then inside X, we will look for Y and Z. So in this case, we are matching Y to the number 42 here. Uh, and this, in this other case, we are matching the variable Z to this string here. Um, so you may be wondering how hard is to evaluate these things, um, which hadn't been properly uh, studied before for some of these um, classes that I just introduced. So what we're looking here, what we're looking for here is um, the set of all mappings that satisfy a particular expression in a document, uh, which we denote with that thing here. The problem is that this set might be exponential. You may have an exponential number of mappings in a document. So what we are really going to focus on is the delay between uh, outputting two consecutive mappings in an enumeration. So if, for example, if you have a polynomial time delay algorithm and a polynomial size set of mappings, we will have like polynomial time overall. And to study this problem, we focus on this question right here. So uh, this, we call this the evaluation problem. And we take an expression 
from one of these languages that we just, we just covered, we take a document and we take a mapping and we ask, can we extend this mapping so it satisfies this expression over this document? And why do we study this problem? Well, it turns out that if we can solve efficiently, uh, if we can efficiently uh, answer this problem, in particular if this problem is in P, we can enumerate uh, this set here in polynomial time. On the other hand, we study this problem also, which is just asking if uh, the set of uh, mappings that satisfy uh, the expression on the document is empty, uh, which is just a special case of the problem that I just talked about, will give us a, a lower bound. So it's also um, a interesting problem to study. So if we look at the regex formulas and variable automata now, uh, under this semantics, we get that in their most general form, the non-emptiness problem is MP complete, which means that we don't know if there's a polynomial, if there's an efficient algorithm to enumerate the mappings that satisfy them. And what's the problem? Well, it turns out that variables can only be assigned at most once. So we must remember which variables are assigned and which are unassigned. And this will constrain the choices that we can take along the path. So this will make the whole thing hard. So in order to make the problem easy, we introduce the constraint of sequentiality in which we will uh, make sure that each path doesn't use the same variable more than once. So for example, here on the left, this is okay because we are using the variable x in two different paths because this is, this is like uh, an option. You can take one path or the other path. Same thing for the automata. Uh, but the things on the right, we won't allow them because, for example, here we're using the same variable twice uh, in a concatenation, or here we might like, go uh, like more than once over x, and same thing here. Um, and this is going to make everything harder. So what do we lose from introducing this um, constraint? Well, it turns out that we don't lose much. Uh, we, like the two classes of regex and sequential regex are equivalent in terms of expressiveness. So we haven't lost anything in terms of expressiveness. It also turns out that this property is pretty easy to check. It's in NL. And it gives us an efficient algorithm to solve the evaluation problem, which means that we have a polynomial time delay algorithm for the enumeration uh, problem, which is nice. Um, well, what about extraction rules? Well, it turns out that in the most general case, extraction rules are also NP-hard. And the problem here is that uh, these rules induce dependencies between variables. And these dependencies can get pretty complex and can encode like very hard graph problems, like uh, Hamiltonian path, for example. Uh, for example, like this rule right here would have this dependency graph. Um, and we don't really like this dependency graph because it looks pretty complicated. Uh, but if we look at the example that we mentioned earlier, uh, we can see that this is a tree and this is a very natural example. So it seems like a very natural restriction to restrict to rules that are tree-like. That means that their uh, dependency graph looks like a tree. And it turns out that if we introduce this um, constraint, now the problem, well, this constraint, in addition to the previous constraint of sequentiality, now the problem of evaluation is in P, which means that we have a, a polynomial time delay algorithm. And it also, like doing this, also allowed us to compare uh, these other classes to the extraction rules. And we found out that regex, in this case, is equivalent to unions of rules that are sequential and tree-like. And also, if we uh, restrict the variables in, used in the rule uh, to be used like at most once, which means like all the variables in the left-hand side are distinct, then we, it turns out that any 
rule of this kind can be transformed into a union of sequential tree-like rules, which means that sequential tree-like rules are pretty expressive. Uh, they don't cover like every, every kind of extraction rule, but they cover a pretty large part of them. Um, so we've seen how these three things can be extended now to uh, support incomplete information and how they relate. So in conclusion, um, it's very, we, we just saw that it's like pretty easy to provide new semantics that will allow us to um, introduce incomplete information to these previously known, uh, previously studied uh, formalisms. And also like under new, under our new general semantics, we can compare them in terms of expressiveness and complexity. And also, we saw that these problems were hard when unconstrained, um, which is pretty bad because we want to use them in practice. But we see that we can introduce simple constraints that will allow us to express most of the things that we want to express and get efficient algorithms to evaluate them. Thank you. So you say that regex, if I understood correctly, have the same expressive power as sequential regex, right? Um, yes. Yeah, uh, but then. Uh, what is the cost of the translation, if you want, from regex to oh, sequential regex? Yeah, that's a, a detail. So uh, it's an, uh, there's like a exponential uh, blow up if you if you want to go like from regex to sequential regex. Okay. Um, and it's the so same? that ex normal regex is like ex exponentially more Precise. concise than. I think the same thing goes for uh, extraction rules and uh, the sequential automata. 